Are you thinking of upgrading your old Ryzen CPU to a new Ryzen 5000 CPU? Are you hoping to keep your existing motherboard? Good news, most of you should be able to do this. Keep watching and I'll show you how I did it. The box is empty, the CPU is already installed. Who do you think I am? Linus? What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hard for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I review and test PC cases, CPU coolers, and PC case fans. So if you are into computers, feel free to take a look around the channel. And if you end up liking what you see, please subscribe. Now the first thing you need to do before actually buying a new Ryzen 5000 CPU is to make sure that it's actually compatible with your current motherboard. So you will need to go to your board manufacturer's website and find your specific motherboard. The motherboard I installed mine on is the ASRock X470 Tai Chi. So you'll likely need to go under support and then there should be a tab or a link to supported CPUs for your motherboard. You'll need to search through the list for the specific CPU you wish to purchase. I upgraded to a Ryzen 9 5900X, which is supported by this motherboard. This chart should also indicate which BIOS version is required. For some motherboards, there may be a newer BIOS version available. It's typically a good idea to download the newest update. Now, depending on how old the BIOS on your motherboard is, you may actually have to double update, meaning you have to update to a certain level and then update from that again. So you might actually have to flash the BIOS more than once. The next step is to download the BIOS. Once the BIOS is downloaded, you'll need to unzip the BIOS and save it to a USB drive. Now, I recommend that you don't update your BIOS until you're ready to install the Ryzen 5000 CPU. So once you have the Ryzen 5000 CPU, you can load into your UEFI. I recommend loading default settings before flashing the BIOS. I've just run into some minor issues that it just won't let you flash if you have an overclock on your motherboard or on the CPU. Save and exit, load back into the UEFI, navigate to the flash BIOS option, select flash BIOS. You may need to navigate to the USB drive and find the specific BIOS version you're wanting to install. Once you've found the update you want, select install or flash BIOS. Please note it is very important that the system does not lose power or get switched off while flashing the BIOS because there's a pretty good chance your motherboard will be bricked if that happens. The flashing of the BIOS should take five or so minutes. Once the flashing of the BIOS is complete, you'll need to power down your system because it's time to remove your old CPU and replace it with the new CPU. I replaced my Ryzen 7 2700 with my new Ryzen 9 5900X. Now, depending on your system, it might be easiest to actually remove the motherboard from the case or at least lay the case down, but I didn't do that because I'm a dumbass who's trying to make a video. Remove the CPU cooler. Now before removing the old CPU, you should clean both the bottom of the CPU cooler and the top of the IHS of your old CPU, or you might end up making one heck of a mess. Also, it's a pretty good idea to make sure that you've turned off the power supply before removing the CPU. Once everything is relatively clean, remove the old CPU and install the new CPU. Before reinstalling the cooler, you should clean off the new CPU's IHS and the cooler with some isopropyl alcohol. And of course, apply thermal paste to the CPU's IHS. Once this is all done, you can reinstall the cooler. Once everything is reinstalled and good to go, make sure the power supply is turned back on and turn on the system. Now, there's a pretty good chance that the system will boot cycle before giving you a post. This is normal. But if it keeps boot cycling or you're left with a black screen, there might be something wrong. Now, the chance of something like this happening is pretty slim, but there is always a chance. This is where having an onboard debug tool can help a lot. But besides that, you're pretty much on your own. Sorry about that. As the system boots into the operating system, the screen might or likely will flash a few times. Again, this is normal. Windows is just installing new drivers. And that's it, you're done. It's pretty much that simple for most people to go from a Ryzen 1000 series CPU to a Ryzen 5000 CPU. However, before I say goodbye, there are two things I would like to add. 
First, if you have a low-end B350 or B450 motherboard and you're thinking of getting a 5900X or a 5950X, please don't. It's likely not a good idea. There's a pretty good chance that most board manufacturers won't even support those CPUs on their low-end motherboards because the VRMs are just not good enough. But some of them might. And you don't want to fry your motherboard because doing so will likely fry the CPU that you're trying to put into that motherboard as well. Just be careful. The second thing is, if you're upgrading to a Ryzen 5000 CPU, please, 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 please undervolt it. Because AMD's Precision Boost will boost the CPU as much as it can thermally. The Ryzen 9 5900X that I installed boosts to 4.3 gigahertz on all cores, all on its own. Now, yes, that is on a custom water cooling loop, so not everyone will be able to reach that. Now, I was able to undervolt the CPU to have a 7 Celsius-ish lower temperature while increasing the clock speed to 4.4 gigahertz. So yes, higher clock speed with lower temperatures. So yeah, please try undervolting your 5000 series CPUs. Now, if you don't know how to undervolt a CPU, I do have a video on how to do it. I'll have it linked down in the description and I'll also have a card linked above. And yeah, that's all I have. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching, maybe hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. Please follow me on Twitter at HFG underscore YT. There is also the HFG Discord server. It is completely free to join. I, I put up all the charts from my CPU coolers, my fans and cases that I test up on there so you can take a look at all everything that I've tested. You also might want to uh, take a look at these. They'll probably be the CPU coolers and case fans or something like that. And as always, thank you for watching and see you next time.